And so God's been giving me this word and this vision, and he's been letting it sit in the crock pot for a couple of months. How many like that crock pot cooking, right? Anybody got anything waiting on you uh, when you get home right now? Invite me over if so. Today I get to share for you the vision of our church for 2021, and some of the things that I'll share today will be a vision for the next three years or so. And uh, I'm just so excited today. What an amazing day. I just want to give props already for everything that's already happened, especially Tiffany. That was so good. It blessed my heart so well, so much. This isn't in my notes, but I just want to say, because I know there's a lot of block people up in the house, and we want you to know that you have transformed our community, and we appreciate what you do. And though it's very small, it's my honor as a church to be able to give just a little bit of proceeds every single month to this mission of Redeemed Home. Isn't that a great thing that we get to support church? It's awesome. It's awesome. By chance, is there anyone here today or participating online that you attended our service on Easter Sunday of 2019? You happen to have been here almost now going on two years ago. I took this picture of the worship team on that Sunday. If you were there, you'll remember that uh, God packed out the chapel at Cincinnati, what was Cincinnati Christian University. And there were over a thousand people on the campus that day. Anybody remember that? I'll never forget that day. But I can honestly say, I am more excited about today's service than I was that service. There are far less than a thousand people in this room, though we are deep up in here this morning. Yeah. You see, like never before in my life, after. And the best word I could come up with is surviving last year. I honestly believe that I've heard from God through his word and through discerning what we've all experienced. And I am so confident in this word. As a matter of fact, I was confident when he gave it to me. And I almost rushed into sharing it with you this past fall. But I'm so glad I didn't rush. Because that would have been a mistake. You see, over the last 21 days, our church has been praying and we've been fasting. And I want you to know that has not been in vain, church, because we have had several breakthroughs and blessings, things that I would have never imagined back in the fall if I would have unleashed this then. But God said the time is now. So never before am I more confident in the timing that it's right for what I'm going to share with you today. In just a moment, I'm going to read a verse from the book of Acts, chapter number 2. The book of Acts is the history of the early disciples after they were empowered by the Spirit. And the church, for two millennia now, have looked back to that first church as a model for how church should be done. But there's a problem. If we be honest with ourselves, most American churches don't really resemble what we see in the book of Acts. I'm not saying that critically. I'm saying that as uh, one of the leaders of those churches in America. I say that reflecting on my own leadership. It's not because we're not trying. In my opinion, it's not because of a lack of effort. But usually, would you think with me, what is it that causes this disconnect from what we see and what they saw. I would say that there is a missing ingredient. How many people know that you can just get one ingredient wrong in the recipe and it throws the whole thing off? Anybody have southern roots? Anybody had a mamma or a a grandma or grandma, big mama, whatever you called them? This is a multi-ethnic jury. I got to get all the different words, you know, in mama, whatever it is. How many had a mama who knew how to make homemade biscuits? I'm I'm, I'm meddling right now, aren't I? I'm I'm shortening my time. As soon as I said biscuits, I lost five minutes of your attention. (laughs) How many actually can make biscuits yourself? You know the ingredients. You know the recipe for biscuits. How many know if I leave out some kind of lard or some type of Crisco or whatever it may be, 
Just that one ingredient, is it going to turn out right? Nope, just that one ingredient makes all the difference. Now, I'm going to paint with a broad brush here, so give me grace. But in my opinion, usually churches in America fall in one of two categories. One, they're all about the head. Or two, they're all about the hands. The head is sermons. The head is Bible studies. The head is teaching. The head is right doctrine. How many of you grew up in a church like that? But then there are churches that are all about the hands. The hands is experience. The hands is worship. The hands is service. The hands is outreach. How many of you grew up in a church like that, or you're a part of something like that? Yeah. And generally speaking, what happens is that the head churches become inwardly focused, and the hands churches are outwardly focused. Now, there's nothing wrong in itself of being inwardly focused or outwardly focused because we need both. Neither is wrong, but they're not right alone. Let me present to you a different option. Guess where I find it? It's in the Bible. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse number 38. You'll recognize verse 38, but I'm coming to verse 39. There's so many verses in the Bible that are well known, and then the verse right after it is one of the best verses, but no one knows it because they only know the verse that comes right before it. John 3.16 is one of those verses. You know that, but then John 3.17, it's truth, it's fire, right? But you know John 3.16. This is one of those passages. Okay, so let me give you the one you probably have heard before. Acts 2.38. If you've heard it, like say amen or say, if you well, if you grew up Presbyterian, you were not allowed to say amen out loud, were you? No. If you're, if you're Pentecostal, you probably, got to, you probably said it really loud, right? Yeah. Baptist, it just depends what type. Yep, yep. You ready? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You've heard that one? All right, stop. Don't go to the next one. Stop. Don't look in your Bible. Don't look on your phone right now. You don't say it out loud, but who honestly you think you know what comes next? Anybody? Maybe? The pastor said maybe. Okay. I'll be honest. I, 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 was, I was thrown off too. Okay? By, you know, seminary, all that stuff. What comes next? Brother Tom, come on. You're giving yourself away right now. All right. You don't remember. Here it is. You ready? Verse 39. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Fire. Fire. Do you see it? Remember I was talking about hands and head, inward and outward. Do you see it? Let me, let me, let me highlight it for you. To help you. For the promise is, that's inward. What about, let's go to the end. And to all who are far off. What's that? Outward. But here's the key. Look at this. And to your children. What's that? That's both. See that? Your children, that's outward, but your children are your children. That's inward. How would you describe this? Not inward, not outward focus, not just head, not just hands. Here's how I would describe this promise. By the way, this is our promise. This is not Old Testament. This is not for Israel other than we are Israel in Christ. You understand what I'm saying? We've been grafted in. Father Abraham had many sons. I'm one of them because of Jesus. 
This is our promise. How would I describe this promise? Head, heart? No, this is how I describe it. Health. Healthy. We aren't looking for a head-only church. We're not looking for a hands-only church. We need a healthy church. And when we are transformed into a healthy church, there will be a natural flow. Look at the flow here we got. There will be a natural flow that comes with discipleship. It's, it's coming from the heart, and you're wanting to learn and grasp and know. Coming from the heart, you're wanting to serve and show. But I want you to know that once you know, it causes you to want to give. And when you give, you want to know what you can empower and teach those who you are serving. It's this homeostasis. It's this health. It's when God, uh, when you are in rhythm with the heartbeat of God. A transformed, healthy church is made up of transformed, healthy people. And here's what I need you to know. And a healthy and transformed people will transform their community. I appreciate that. That's what I was hoping for. Let me say it like this. Church, can I speak this word? If God will transform us, church, I believe God's going to transform this community. I believe it's going to start right here, and it's going to start with others who've already been working, and we're going to get in flow, and we're going to get in sync with the heartbeat of God. So this is a vision of being transformed that are going to overflow not only to you, not only to your children, but to all who are far off. It's threefold. Somebody say, to you. Then say, to your children. And then say, to all who are afar off. Now, I want you to take this handout. I really don't have a message. I feel like Tiffany already gave the message. And we're going to celebrate Brittany being baptized here in just a moment. I think that's the message. I want you to take this, and if I could just take just a few minutes and walk you through what this vision, this threefold vision to you, to your children, to all who are far off. And if you are joining us and participating by way of internet, and I would imagine there's more people probably who will watch throughout the week than are actually even in this room, I want you to go to our website. And if you'll go to the Watch Live, all of the information that has been prepared and that is in the seats here is actually on the website and you can participate just like you were right here, because you are right here with us. First of all, if I could quickly let you know how we're going to be transformed. We have in your seat a devotional that's going to start off a campaign for discipleship. It begins next week. And here's the idea of this campaign that will last for seven weeks. It's called 50 Days to Freedom. And we are going to help you get healthy in every area of your life. And so this is your gift today. You get to take this home only if you intend to participate. Yeah. If you're not, maybe you're saying, I got other things going on, then just leave it in your seat. And if by chance there's someone here today who didn't get one, at the end of the service, you stick around and then there'll be some of these in your seat that you can pick up and take with you. If you're watching by way of internet, we're gonna mail these to you today as you fill out that form under our website because we want the whole church to get healthy. And we want you to get healthy in every area of your life. Not only will you be doing a devotional for the next 50 days, 50 days to freedom, but there will be Sunday experiences and sermons just like you experienced today for the next seven weeks that are going to blow your mind and rock your socks, and it's just going to be amazing. But I feel like the most transformational piece to this campaign is that we have seven small group leaders, most of them virtual, two that are in person, that are going to lead our groups through content that you're only going to get by being a part of the group. And it is the secret sauce. It's the Cholula sauce of the campaign. 
Matter of fact, if you are a small group leader of the seven, would you stand to your feet right now so we could just honor and recognize you? Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so very much. There'll be more at the end in just a moment about how you can get signed up for those small groups or that you can sign up for this discipleship campaign, 50 Days to Freedom, and it's all for you. Also for you, something that you've heard before called growth tracks, 101, 201, 301, 401. Pastor Gordon, if you would, I want you to come to the front at this time. 101 is about connecting, 201 is about thriving, 301 is discovering, and 401 is activating. You see this, it it starts inward, and then it works us outward towards the mission, towards the community. And we have a big vision and a big goal, so God has led us to make a move. And after decades, three decades, four decades, 43 years of ministry, over 43 years? Yeah. About 40 years of ministry, primarily to children. I tapped Pastor Gordon and said, I need you to really pray about this. I don't think you're going to do it, but I feel like God's impressing me. And guess what? God spoke to him too. And so now God is moving Pastor Gordon. I wouldn't say he's moving him up, but I would say he's moving him in. And this is our new discipleship pastor at Revive City Church. So grateful for you. He's going to work with me to oversee and lead growth tracks. And here's why we got to do this together, and I can't do this alone, is because here's a big vision for our church. We want to see 100% of our active members graduate 101 through 401. 100. Did you hear me? I said 100. That when you, so when I say 100, you, he's talking about me. <laughs> I'm talking about you. If you're an active member of this church, that's what we're asking for. And even if you're watching online, we're going to make a way so that you can participate as well. I want you to also know that Pastor Gordon and his discipleship responsibilities teaches a phenomenal class. It currently meets behind us here at 930 called Answers. And anyone who is looking for a deep Bible study should join in. Next week, he'll be teaching 201 on January 31st from 2 to 4 o'clock. We got to get a bigger room because there's so many people who are signed up. Today is the last day to sign up for 201. And then on February 21st, we'll have our, our 101, which how many of you graduated 101? You've already graduated 101? Look at all these 101 people. All right. Fantastic. Our next one will be February the 21st. And today, everyone should have a connection card. This is very important for today. Because this is how you're going to get signed up. So if you're like, you know what, I want to do 101. Just write your name and then write 101, circle it. I want to do 201 next week, January 31st, 2 to 4. Write your name, write 201, circle it. And this is how you're going to drop this in that black box on the way out today. Or you could even leave it in your seat and pick it up. Leave your phone number there and you may even get a date. Somebody may take your phone number and text you. That would be great. This vision is not only to you, but it's for your children. It's for your children. And one of the things that uh, has been, I feel like, most disappointing about the, the virus that we're all dealing with right now is that for over about a year now, going on a year, we've not had an elementary um, children's ministry and program. And I think it's time for us to relaunch, revive kids. Come on. I think there are too many children in our community, too many children in our church. And if we're going to be real about transformation, it starts with our kids. As a matter of fact, I've got hope, more hope. Is that okay if I say it that way? For our kids and even for myself. I believe God's going to do greater things through my kids than he'll do through me. Someone said it this way, it's better to build boys and girls than try to repair men and women. So we can get them with a fresh start. So we're going to relaunch Revive Kids. And if you would, Desiree, if you'll just come step up to the plate. We have our new interim director of children's ministry, Miss Desiree Davis. We are so excited. We have prayed through. We've talked through what it looks like to take the environments that are here and revive them and bring life 
and excitement and it be clean and be safe. I'm so excited about that. We have new curriculum, and with this new curriculum comes new opportunities because I know there are gifted people in this room, and God's going to use you. And so you're like, I've been looking for an opportunity to volunteer. You're going to use this connection card. You're going to write your name. You're going to write kids, and you're going to circle it. And this is how we're going to get you in with our new curriculum, our new program, helping train our children. The only thing that we ask, and we, want, we say this out loud because we want our parents to know that the only requirement is a background check so that we keep our kids safe. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, let's give it up for Miss Desiree one more time. And finally, and this is the, the longest point. Because I kind of have that evangelistic heart, you know what I mean? To all those who are afar off, at Revive, we call them lost sons and daughters. We call them lost sons and daughters because they're not others. They're not those people. They're not crack addicts. They're not meth addicts. They're not prostitutes. They're not, they're not, they're, they're not dope boys and jack boys. It's just lost sons and daughters. That just need to come home to the father's family. Come back home to the father's table. That's who they are. Lost sons and daughters. Sorry, I get emotional. You heard, you heard me tell this story before. This is not in my notes, but I feel God said, tell it again. When we first moved here, Karen, would you come up here? For, and you hate when I do this, but I'm going to do it. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. She's trying to slide all in, all, all in. in. Ooh, ooh, okay, I see you. Okay. Eight years ago, my wife and I, we moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, from Dayton, Ohio. And even though it's only an hour away, we, knew, we didn't know one person in the city. We didn't have a team. We didn't have money. Really didn't have a plan. <laughs> but we got God. We got a vision. That's why I'm excited about Vision Sunday. I feel like we get to start all over again here today. And, uh, baby, you remember, we, we moved in on Clark Street. Uh, we lived in the, in the James Gamble house, built in 1850. James Gamble. Uh, it, it, it wasn't all that, though. But anyway, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was, we loved it. And uh, I would leave the house. I'd walk on 12th Street, walk across to Vine, and I'd walk south on Vine. And I'd have invitations. I'd have these invites to revive. And it'd say, starting on March the 31st, 2013. I didn't have a location on the invite because we didn't have one. We were that naive to pass out invitations to a church starting when we didn't have a building to meet in. But we have faith. Guess what? God gave us a building. <laughs> I remember I was walking down Vine Street, and I was right there by Fountain Square, and there was a gentleman who was obviously drunk, and he asked me to give him food because he perceived that I was some type of pastor. Little did he know I was not a real pastor. I was just a wannabe pastor. And, uh, and I felt like God said, yeah, get him something to eat and talk to him. And let's hear his story. And long story short, at the end of that conversation of me thinking that I had wasted my time, that man asked to use my phone. I gave him my phone. He called his mother in Atlanta, Georgia, hit her up for money, and then handed me the phone. And the sweetest, most southern, southern bell voice I've ever heard in my life said these words that I'll never forget. Pastor, thank you for caring about my son. And in that moment, it all hit me. That every single person in the city is somebody's son or daughter. And that God had called me to look out for those sons and daughters while they were away from home. And, I'm, and we are honored. We're honored to serve you for these past eight years. And I give God glory for all he's doing. I love you, baby. Love you. We feel like God's going to transform our church, and especially he's going to transform our Sundays. He's going to transform our, our, our ministry in order to reach those who are, are far off. But first of all, let's talk about those who don't come to our church, those who are really afar off. 
I'm super excited to announce this. It's called Operation Outreach. Our church is known throughout our community for being a give back church, giveaway church. 150,000 pounds of food in six weeks, this church gave away. Six semi truckloads of food, and, and it goes on and on, and gifts and book bags, and you name it. And I honor and I celebrate every volunteer that makes that possible, every donor that makes that possible. We're known for giving back, but usually those outreaches are driven from the top down. But what we believe God is doing is something from the ground up. And so what I feel like God told me to, to do is to put the resources in the hands of the people who are closest to the need. So we're starting something that is going to be a outreach grant and when you have an idea and you have a thought and you have this thing in your mind, like, I think I can help people. I got a ministry. I got an idea to get the word out to Jesus. Guess what? We're going to write you a check. We're going to write you a check. And then we're going to get volunteers around you and say, you lead it and we're going to come help you. It's like Shark Tank up in here. Somebody help me out. That's what I'm talking about. I'm so excited about that. Some of you have, I guarantee there's people in this room that have thought, man, if, if we would just do this, I bet you we could reach these people. And, and here I am studying the Bible, and God has already given me the gifts that I need in this congregation. Operation Outreach, the Outreach Grant. I'm so excited. This is brand new. We feel like we missed our opportunity because of COVID and all that was going on. Civil unrest actually was the actual cause, and then it was COVID. Uh, from us traveling to Haiti, in previous years, and so we said, let's go somewhere stateside, and so I've connected with a pastor. He'll be here in a couple of weeks. We're going to go minister to Satanists, Wiccans, uh, atheists, agnostics in Portland, Oregon this year. We're going to take a mission trip to Portland, Oregon. I'm so excited about that opportunity, and then lastly, in this Operation Outreach, we're going to put, we're, we have a thousand New Testaments. We're going to put them in your hand and then train you and equip you to put the Word of God into your family members, your friends, or your neighbor's hand through Hope Changes Everything. That's what we're doing outside of the walls of the church. Inside of the walls of the church, God is mixing up some things. I think I'm okay to say some of this because I don't think our, our internet goes that far, but I would, appreciate, uh, I would appreciate everybody just understanding and knowing what I'm about to say. It's not information that's privy to everyone. God is moving and changing things, and so we got to move and change. And I want, I want Tom and I want Jared to come join me up on the stage. Along with Tom and Jared, there's also Pastor Doug Wampler, and we are assembling a new teaching team. I will be ministering for about 15 to 16 Sundays a year, and you've heard this before, but I'll tell our guests. I've become the chaplain of the Cincinnati Reds. I'm very grateful for that opportunity to reach those sons for Jesus. With that opportunity comes an opportunity to invest and empower and to bless you. Because what I found out is I actually will still be at those services when the Reds are playing at home. But I thought it would be better for me instead of rushing from one thing to another like I've done before in the past. God help me. How about people who are gifted and blessed and talented in the church come and speak? And so these guys four to six times in 2021 a piece. And you've heard Pastor Doug before and you've heard Tom before. But Jared is an up-and-coming pastor, and God's going to use him. I've heard him preach. I wouldn't have him come preach if I didn't think he could preach. Come on now. <laughs> pastor Jared is going to do amazing things. Tom has an amazing story. Tom's pastor at a mega church, and then he had a fall, and God's restoring Tom. And he's going to reach people that I couldn't reach. And I love being in this process of restoration with you, walking with you as one of your advisors and guides and just really just your brother. And there's an anointing on his life, and I'm thankful that God is restoring him into that. And I'm glad that we can lock arms and lead together in this new teaching team. Let's give it up for what God is doing there. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll be, I'll be batting clean up because I'm going to be preaching over 70% of the time. But I'm looking forward to this new, this new team. 
And then here's the last part of this vision. And you're probably like, what is this, some kind of, some kind of Amway speech? No. I'm just talking to my family right now. I think everybody knows this. I think it's time we get serious about having our own building. You say, Pastor, you got a building? Nope. I don't know what it's going to look like. There's lots of different ideas. We could go try to find a building. We could form a partnership with someone who has a building. I, the, the pastor who's going to come from Oregon, Oregon, he's going to tell you a story how someone gave him a building. I believe God could do that for our church. But regardless, if we go look for a building, we partner with a building, someone gives us a building, there will be a financial commitment that comes along. And you know what I felt like God is leading us to do is to get serious. If we're really going to remodel here, if we're really going to find some place, if we're really going to do something that involves us having stake, having a stakehold, then we got to prepare. we got to get ready. How many of you, 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 you remember the process of buying your first home? That's a big process. You don't, you don't wake up today and be like, oh, I'm going to go buy a house today. That's usually not how it works. you got to get ready. you got stuff to get in order. And, and one of the big things you got to do is you got to get a down payment. And if you're going to remodel a house, you, you got to get some, some funds. And so I was like, it's like finally the light bulb is so simple. And it's like, okay, you want a building? Get ready for a building. Start preparing the way. Start leading the way. David never built the, built the temple, but he got everything ready for Solomon to do it. And even if God takes me off this scene, I want to leave something for somebody so that we can get this thing going so that we can help with whatever God is already doing in Price Hill to see transformation in this place. That's what I'm saying. But guess what? Here's what you need to know about whatever God is doing in your life. Whenever it's God, I want you to know you're not the first one to show up. You'll, if it's God, you'll never be the first one to show. We're not the first one to show up and think this, but I want you to know we're not the first one to show up and say, believe in this. And so last year, one of the members of our church who did not want to be mentioned, and I will not mention, he gave a $1,000 seed for our building fund. Last year, in the middle of a pandemic, that took faith. Guess what, sir? God took that faith, and someone sent us a $5,000 anonymous in check orders, money orders, $5,000 anonymously. That makes $6,000. And while we were praying and fasting for the past 21 days, a, a gentleman from Rich Pond Baptist Church in, Green, in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, gave me for our church a $10,000 check for our building fund. That's $16,000. Get ready. <laughs> If I was TDJ, I'd say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> now, I know as soon as we start talking about things like that, and as I conclude this morning, that there's someone who would say, see, I knew that's what that church was all about. All they're doing is trying to get more money. But I want you to know that transformation happens when we believe God, when we receive his word. In the end of chapter 2 of the book of Acts, they receive Peter's word. And then people get baptized, just like Brittany in just a moment is going to get baptized. And then, like... There's this healthy church that we read in Acts 2 from verse 40 to 43. And there's teaching and there's fellowship and there's outreach and they're breaking bread. And then what happens? Head and heart and hands are transformed. They're learning that through the, their mind, the apostles' doctrine. They're with their hands. They are breaking bread. Their hearts are being transformed. And God starts doing miracles. Miracles. Hey, come on now, $10,000, that's not, that's not just something to, to, to go to sleep on. I didn't tell you about this. I don't know if you can go back in the slides. On Thursday, I walked through a building that's 2.7 miles from here. 
someone's building a center for racial unity and said, would you like to have your church here? There'll be, there'll be things like Crossroads Undivided there. There's a new Christian college coming to Cincinnati that'll be there. I, could, I, I wish I could tell you everything. I walked through this building on Thursday. Come on, your prison, your fasting. Come on, help me now. God's, God's doing miracles. I don't know what the future, I don't know if that's the place, but I'm just saying God is opening doors. If I was like Tiffany, I'd be like, you know, boom, God's kicking open those doors, right? But look what happens. Verse 44, and, I can, and I'm concluding. And if you're a guest, I do that three times. <laughs> now, all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possession and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Praising God. Look, look at this, verse 46. So continually, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Notice this. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Here's what I need you to know about generosity. Generosity leads to life change. Generosity leads to life change. They gave to the Lord and the Lord gave them souls. He added to the church. 3,000 people on that day got saved. Can you imagine if I can vision with me right now, all the partnerships, all the nonprofits and the churches coming together in this community, can we imagine over the next three to five years, 10 years, 3,000 people in Price Hill getting saved? It would transform the community. Now, if you're a guest this morning, this is not for you. We purposely don't talk about money on Sunday mornings because we don't want people who need Jesus to let anything stop them from coming to him. This is for our church family. I believe God is going to save so many souls that it's going to change this neighborhood. I believe there's so many people who are going to go through 101 and 201 and 401 that there is something catalytic that is going to happen and discipleship, not just some type of phony fake, come here, gone tomorrow, but I'm talking about rooted disciples who are willing to lay down their life for the cause of Christ, people who will leave Price Hill and go into the other nations, to the regions beyond so that we can see people all over the world come to know Jesus. God's up to something in this place. I believe it. I believe it. And I believe in it so much that me and Karen, we want to invest in it. Now here's, here's the cynic and the skeptic in me. Could God do it without us? Absolutely. Again, it wasn't like it started with us. People have been doing this work before we ever got here. Could God do it without us? Yes. Could God do it without our money? Yes, sure. But I don't want him to. I don't want him to. Lord, if you're doing something in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without my family. Don't do it without my church. Don't do it without us, God. I know you can, but God, I, I want to be a part. I want to be a part of it, and I'm willing. I'm willing. So we feel like we got to give above and beyond what we would normally even give if we're ever going to reach some kind of crazy goal, and I don't have time to really talk about it. I'll talk about it next week, okay? But let's look at verse 41. Can we skip to verse 41? We'll talk about the offering next week. It says, and then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Today I ask you this question as we conclude. Who will gladly receive? Who will receive and respond to your need for Jesus? Who will say yes 
to him. Today, if you need to call on Jesus to forgive you of your sins, just like Tiffany found that forgiveness and that cleansing, then what I want you to do is just take your connection card, write your name, and write the word yes and circle it. And we have a Bible for you. And we have people who will walk with you on this new life with Christ. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the content. Be sure to like and comment. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button right now. And then right next to it is a little bell. Touch the little bell, click the little bell, and that's gonna turn on notifications so when we upload another video, you'll know when it comes.